Glory be to the Triumph God. A blessing, good afternoon to all of you. We all have uh, gathered here to get a guidance to select the best leader for ourselves future. In this world of confusion, where the options are many and we don't know what to choose, how to choose and when to choose. We are really privileged and blessed that such a program has been organized by the parish so that the future generation or the upcoming generation gets a proper guidance of what, of what to select, how to select and when to select and uh, what will be the best option for themselves. And for this, we are really blessed to have Professor Christopher Abraham sir amongst us. He is a permanent resident of uh, Canada with triple postgraduate degrees in HRM, Business Administration and Labour Administrative Law. Here he also holds a PhD in positive psychology. He is presently the CEO and head of Dubai campus and senior vice president of uh, at the SPJ School of Global Management. He's a, he has been a visiting professor at many leading universities in Australia, USA, Canada, Singapore, UK. He has achieved many excellence awards in his life, uh, namely Best CEO in 2008 and 2019 by Indo-UAE Business and Social Forum, twice winner of the Education Leadership Award at World Leadership Congress in 2015 and 2017. He was again twice awarded as Outstanding Professional of the Year by Junior Chamber International. He is a honorary fellow at Leaders Excellence at Howard Square and Global Advisory Board Member at World CMO Council, Chief Marketing Officers Council. So we are really blessed and privileged to have such a highly distinguished guest among us. Uh, he will, this session will be really fruitful and I believe and I trust that this will be fruitful to you also. Yanaru Padikina Sametha, Patara Sarayimo, in Yanatha Dharatakanam, and all the Parthadra and Ayu. Isto Raya is subject to Araiko, Adhuayana, either the Kandavar and Ayu. Adhuayana is a reason for Ayu and Ayu. Ayu and Ayu. Patara Sarayimo, E. Varsha Mandalam Padikina, and the Marvel Medica, is a young man of free Ayu. Patara Sarayimo, Pantran <laughs> session <laughs> Uh, they have the capability and capacity. I, I would request all of you to utilize this opportunity to the maximum. You know, uh, okay, Sarkozy told you. You know, the 
Malaysia mana cerita orang orang berani, orang orang ini kanan lalu orang berani. Sarane, sangat bersyukur kepada ibu saya sekarang. Sesi ini juga berarti sangat penting. Jesus Christ. I want to start with a little video. What's that carefully? 
It's about plans that the Lord has for us. And then as we progress, please feel free to ask any questions. Or if you feel you want me to flow in the presentation and then reserve your questions, I'm open to that also. We have time. We can go up to what time, uh, Father? Till 1 o'clock? Is that okay? 12.30? Fair. Right. Okay. Oh, perfect. So, thinking about the future, right? We all have, some of us, you know, I ask this question, uh, being a uh, you know, CEO of a business school, we go to schools to talk to students, so you ask the uh, students, you know, what's your plan? Uh, I'm not going to embarrass you asking that question. 90% uh, of the students have no clue. You know, they say, I'm clueless, uh, which is a bad thing actually. But the good thing is that even if you don't have a plan, remember, God has a plan. What's this? Our lives. 
Uh, this is purely from science, sociology, and neuroscience. But I think it's very important that we understand the background of this. This is useful for all of us. Okay? So I'm going to ask you a question. We all, I assume that we all have a God given brain, right? So all of us have a God given brain, right? What percentage of the brain do we actually use? Come again? 20 percent, okay? 15. How much? 17 percent, that's nice. 1 percent, okay, cool. My undergraduate students say minus 4. 100 percent. Can you stand up? Just stand up. Yeah, stand up now. Who said 100 percent? Why didn't you say 100 percent? Okay, guys, listen. What's your good name? Give Priya a big round of applause. Now, this might come surprising to a lot of us. Okay, somebody said 20 person, somebody said 17, somebody said 1 person. I also said my undergrad student say minus 4 person. I don't know why to break with that. But what Priya said, God given wisdom, listen carefully. Okay? Each one of us. Oh, can you hear what I'm saying? Yes? Can you see what you're seeing? Can you sense what you're sensing? means the God-given brain that you and I possess is used 100% of the time. Are you going to be to give a God for this? Because you have a brain that is not a God. Now, you might tell me, this is my God, this is the rest of the country, as well. Biology teacher told us it's only 20%. Right? That's where the 20 came from. And there's another story that goes with it. Albert Einstein apparently had humanity's largest brain. His brain is preserved for posterity in a medical facility in the US. Apparently Albert Einstein used about 8%. So this guy is smarter than Albert Einstein. Are you with me? Which are all myths that need to get shattered. So uh, God bless you Priya for sharing that profound truth. We actually use 100% of our brain. It's an awesome brain. Now why is this important for us? Why is this important? Why is this knowledge important? You tell me, you said now 20%, I've increased your brain power to 100%, what will you do with that? You live, you can do remarkable things. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? We have limited our brain, we have limited our thinking, but God in His infinite wisdom has given us something which is remarkable. Now the next thing I'm going to tell you is what will be shattered. Shattered you for the right reasons. This is the size of my brain. Okay? And if you fold your hands, that's the size of your brain. This little brain, okay, is as of date, today for 28th? 28th? 28th of June 2019, listen carefully, is faster and smarter than the fastest, smartest supercomputer in the world. The, the statement that I may say into your mind, okay? Our brain is faster and smarter than the fastest, smartest supercomputer in the world. Let me validate that. The fastest, smartest supercomputer in the world has 600 billion networks. And that's why it's the fastest, smartest supercomputer. You and I possess a God-given brain that has 100 billion neurons which on a second to second basis interact and connect with each other called neural connections. You know the number? 1.4 trillion neural connections. What is 1.4 trillion neural connections? 1.4 trillion neural connections is larger than the number of atoms in the universe. Don't ask me how many zeros are there, I don't know. Are you getting it? Are you understanding the significance of what God has given us? So that's the brain that God has given us and that's the brain we use for thinking, that's the brain we use with His guidance to decide what we want to do. So today when we go on to this hall, be blessed that you have a brain that God Almighty has given us and that is why when the psalm says, he says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. <coughs> Every little nuance, <coughs> sorry, biological nuance is planned meticulously by God Almighty. Okay? So that's the first thing. For a long time, we have been influenced by some funny biological falsities. The survival of the fittest. Okay? 
Uh, Twitter is not a, a platform to share more insights on this, but I want to again touch upon this because it's very important. It's very crystal. So, when they say survival of fitness, they got it completely wrong. Okay? Uh, so, it wasn't right. And I'll tell you why. Humanity across the world has not only survived, but thrived. Okay? There's a difference between survival and thriving. What is thriving? Flourishing. Exactly. Thriving is prospering. Flourishing. How do you think we have flourished and prospered? As a community, as a whole human community, how have we thrived and flourished? Come on, talk, talk, you have to talk. Yes. Then give me some answer, it doesn't matter. Even if it is wrong, it doesn't matter. Come again, sir. Not by one at all, definitely not by one. What is the opposite of community? Evolving, okay? Not necessarily, okay? Discovery. How did they discover? Super. Who said that? The little ones are very smart. Yeah. Okay. This guy is a good name. Okay. He definitely got the point. He also said God is using the little ones to teach all the wiser people, the elder people. Great. Sit down there. Now, why did I congratulate him? Because today there is plenty of anthropological and historical evidence that we as a species have not only survived but thrived because of working in groups, collaborating in groups, contributing in groups, and we call it the power of community. Okay? So collaboration, cooperation, contribution through collective creativity is what has made us human. And we are also much better off. Okay? If you don't believe me, there is Stephen Clay, a uh, renowned award winning anthropologist who has proved beyond doubt through biology, through anthropology, that we as a species have not only survived but thrived by being better. Which is what the Lord spoke to us about. He taught us that. To love our enemies, to pray for our enemies, right? To work together. The world will be a much better place you know, if we don't have these wars and battles. So that's the second thing, science. Okay, kids don't have any issues, must see, you know, they don't talk about race, they don't talk about gender, they don't talk about you know, all those uh, disparities. Third question. The world is getting worse. True or false? True. 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 Yeah, how many of you say true? How many of you say false? Okay. How many of you will read the newspapers? God bless you. How many of you don't read the newspapers? God bless you even more. <laughs> and I tell you why. Okay? Now listen here. The world is not actually getting worse. The world is actually getting better and better and better. Okay? My God, this guy is giving you all kinds of confusing information. Right? That's what you're thinking. We have an awesome brain. We as a community have tried because of our power to collaborate and cooperate and love each other and be compassionate to each other. And the third thing is, we have an outstanding, abundant world which is incredibly growing better and better and better. And obviously, if I tell you this, you're not going to accept it, so I will prove it to you with some, you know, data. So if you look at, uh, you know, water, water is now a huge problem. You know, today, there's a crisis for water, many of you may be aware, and Kerala State is trying to, you know, offer water. Electricity has increased, education has increased, that blue line is the, uh, the, the, the yellow line is girls' education. So girls again, you have more girls getting into education. In fact, in US universities, there are more girls coming into college, boys are dropping out. So there's a huge crisis about boys not getting into, so it's, it's the opposite now, which is happening. Uh, death by nature has come down dramatically, child mortality has come down, poverty has come down, death rate has come down. How do I say all this? These are all animated by research and incredible improvement. So there is uh, uh, an organization in Sweden which has now tracked the progress of all these things across. Why are all these things important? Because when you're planning a career, you have this huge myth, oh my god, the world is terrible. Okay? What do you read in a typical newspaper? The first pages are all global disasters. Then you get into the inside pages, local disasters, statewide, you know, region-wide disasters. 
Then you get into the business column, you have unemployment, you have job losses, you have petroleum prices going down, rents going up, right? And then you get into the sports column, it's betting and doping scams. And you think the world is a terrible place. But the reality is that the world is not a terrible place. There are wonderful things happening. And here's the most important part. So why does the newspaper sell negative news? Why does the newspaper sell negative news? The world is getting better. Why does the newspaper sell negative news? Okay, why are you attracting negative news? Come again. Okay. Biology, the brain is not wired for survival. So it is instinct to let me a simple example. Parents will immediately appreciate the example. Now this is the, you know, the statement for parents. Okay, a child comes back from school. I am using she as a context, but it can be he or she. She comes back with a report card. Seven subjects, six A's and one B. Where does mama start? I go. The B. And if it was my wife, <coughs> she would cause her house to find out what went wrong. You get it? Rather than appreciate the six A's, you are obsessed with the single B because the brain is not wired for negative. The good news is that you need to move towards positive because day in and day out there are much better things happening in the world. Okay? Uh, there is a website called gapminder.org. I will leave this presentation to the organizers, so feel free to take it and use all these resources. Gapminder.org. If you get into it, you will see that in every dimension, humanity is getting better and better and better. So we learn three very important things. Okay? What is the first thing we learn? Tell me. We have an awesome garden brain. Number two, we thrive as a community because of our collaboration and cooperation. And thirdly, we live in an awesome world full of opportunities and full of abundance. Okay, so keep that in mind when you plan. So don't get uh, influenced by, I'm not saying don't read the newspapers. If you're reading it, read it with a pinch of salt. You know, uh, I'll give you another example and then move on to the essence of what I have to say. You know, more people die every year in swimming pools than in air crashes. I you mean, the statistics. But do we know, do we get to know who died in the swimming pools? No, we don't know. One person died in the swimming pool, another person died in some other swimming pool. We don't care. But when one plane crashes with 120 people, the entire world knows. Are you getting it? So that's the difference. It's our perception towards the world that needs to change. And that is where the wisdom of God comes in, which will guide us towards what we should be doing. So we need shifting context of the brain, the community, and the world full of awareness. What you and I need to do is, our careers, our lives, is not a matter of chance, but by choice, guided by the divine wisdom of God. What should I do? Okay? So, uh, I, I, as I said, I work for a business school. So when we have uh, interviews for, you know, recruiting students, uh, we have a strange category. When I say strange, we normally don't associate them with business school. You have medical doctors who come and uh, you know want to do an MD. And so you are intrigued as a professor, you want to know why does a medical doctor want to do an MD? So you ask that, so you know, okay, that's fine, doctor, but why do you want to do an MD? Now this is a real story. Okay, I'm narrating it in a funny way, but it's real. So that student said, you know, my grandfather. He had a dream that my father would one day become a doctor. Okay? And because my father shattered my grandfather's dream, they made me do a medicine. I don't like medicine. Five years plus two years of surgery. I'm sick and tired. I want to do MD. So many times we are living our dreams for some grandfather's dreams. I mean, I have a lot of respect for grandfathers. But I think we need to be very careful. Father, when he spoke, he said, you know, many times we didn't have the right kind of guidance. Uh, I will share with you a list of, uh, you know, websites. We are all mobile savvy, internet savvy. There's plenty of stuff available for us to do. And all the things in the world that you want to learn, you can learn, and believe me, absolutely free of cost. I'm going to share with you some insights on that. Absolutely free of cost. 
You know, suddenly you see everybody talks about artificial intelligence. At the end of the day, that intelligence is artificial. Please remember. Can't do human intelligence is even more smart. But okay, I don't know what is this artificial intelligence. Don't know. There are websites which will teach you free what is artificial intelligence. First time you don't understand, no problem, you can study it. Free. Free. Okay, so keep this in mind. We live in a world of abundant opportunities. Fine. So after that, what should I be doing? Now, there are some of us who take the career um, direction from tech. I have two of my nephews who did something very interesting. So they were studying in a conventional CDSE school. And then at 10th grade, they finish. They get good grades, they move out, get into diploma engineering, diploma electronics, diploma civil, diploma, whatever they want to do. Because they don't want to waste their time two years doing maths, physics, chemistry, all this stuff. They straight away get into engineering. Now, when you do the three year diploma, what happens is that one more year or two more years you do it, depending on which college the university, you get your B. And then they get into the B track from the 10th onwards. Are you with me? I get what I'm trying to say. 10 plus 2 plus 4 is your conventional BE track. This is 10 plus 3 plus 2. So you actually save one whole year. Number 2, you, you don't need to go through the mundane process of learning English and you know, all the other stuff that you learn in that, that, that. Not that I'm against English. So don't mistake me, not Yeah. Alright. So I'm not against it. I myself am an English literature in my first day. The point is, you have choices today. You have options and choices available. Now, here are a couple of thoughts which I'll share with you as we progress. Okay, again, after 12, what should we be doing? So, conventional Indian mindset thinking. Child should become a doctor. If everybody becomes a doctor, then there will be the patients. Everybody wants to be an engineer. I think that's an old mindset that needs to change. And at this juncture, I want to share a personal story of my eldest son. Now, this guy, when he was seven years, eight years, I'm sorry, seventh grade, eighth grade, he would draw, and he would draw something specific, not unlike other children. He would draw buildings, he would draw cities, he would draw parks. So that was his, you know, drawing passion. And the parents, we looked at it and said, this guy is a budding architect, right? So we groomed them, we nurtured them, we encouraged him. And by the time he completed his grade 12, which he completed in Canada, he got admitted into a university in Canada and a university in New York, sunny Buffalo, into architecture. We were excited, we said, you know, his life's dreams are being fulfilled, our life's dreams are going to be fulfilled, this guy is going to come back as a New York educated architect. I was the one who went and met him the first time, where it's going to you know, acclimatize. One, one year and two months later, I mean, we used to talk to him almost every a week, and then he made a personal call to me and said, Daddy, I, I, I'm going to tell you something, and I don't want you to tell this to Mama now. Okay, and the moment he put that, I was completely shattered. I said, Oh my God, what option is coming across? And then he told me, the last one year and two months, I've been trying to study architecture and understand, be passionate about it. I discovered I'm not passionate. You know, in the U.S. system, the first year is you have a lot of choices you can do. So one of the subjects he took was finance. And he said, I have now decided to move into, in fact, he didn't even ask my opinion, can I move it? That's the, you know, uh, that's the 21st century children. And he said, I have already moved into bachelors in finance and business. And uh, you have to suddenly tell mama sometime later because she'll be shattered. Uh, of course, it took some time for me to share this news with uh, mama. Uh, but today, long story short, he has uh, finished his PhD in financial engineering. He is a research consultant in Sydney. He is happily married with his wife, who is also a PhD. Are you getting what I am trying to say? Our desire is to be an architect, and that's what we thought we, he will. But what he had planned was something which God had planned for him. So, never ever feel disturbed of, I don't know what I have done this. I have a lot of students who do, you know, we have an undergrad program in business. So you would find students who have done NBC, Maths, Physics, Chemistry. So you've done Maths, Physics, Chemistry. Why do you want to do business? The kid says, you know, I didn't want to do Maths, Physics, Chemistry. Maths, Physics, Chemistry, because Papa and Papa wanted me to do Maths, Physics, Chemistry. So I think it's a big lesson for all of us as parents, as, uh, as students. You know, do your homework. That's why when uh, the organizers ask me, I say, you know, 9th grade, 10th grade children will be good because they can plan. What should I be doing after, you know, in 11th and 12th? Okay? And I'll give you some tips as to how we can do it. There are hundreds of thousands of choices available today. 
And many times parents come to me and they'll ask me, you know, we have specialization in finance, marketing, supply chain, so on. So they'll say, uh, Professor, tell us whether we should do marketing, uh, finance or supply chain. I will counter that with another question. So I'd say, why do you want to know which one you should? Which one gets better money? You know what I mean? Which one gets better salary? Salary should be the last criteria you should look at. Salary is an important criteria, but it's not the most important criteria. There's a beautiful Chinese proverb that says, happiness is doing what you love to do and getting paid for it. Many times we stick on to the second part, the getting paid part. We don't look at the passion, what we love to do. So we need to know what we love to do, which I will very you to discover that, how we can identify that, what will be good for us. And then even if we do something wrong, let's say God forbid we took NPC, we didn't want NPC, nothing to worry, it's not the end of the world. You can still rediscover yourself. My life itself is like that. Today I am apparently uh, an expert in neuroscience. I have nothing to do with neuroscience. I was an English literature uh, student. You can reinvent yourself as many times as possible. It's just an open mind to say that the world is full of opportunities. I have an awesome brain and with the collaboration and cooperation of everybody, I can do remarkable things. So keep that in mind. Um, so how do I choose my career? So that's a big question. Okay? Should I go there? Now, in the 20th century, uh, I also want to encourage you that it's no longer about engineering, doctor, law, all these are good, I'm not against it. But you can also look at becoming an entrepreneur. Do whatever you want, but you can still become your own. There are a number of things that you can do, and I will share. If you do the Q&A, you can look at that. Any career should match your interests, should match your values, okay, and should match your talents. Talents are not given, and we you know, develop that. Many parents are ambitious, they put us into different things. Again, take it in the right spirit, you know, and then see which one excites us. So what is valuable, what is interesting, and what is our talent should be the three criteria that should help us to choose the choices. Again, you know, what is 21st century? What should I be doing? Should I be doing AI? If everybody does AI, then where is the human intelligence? Okay? So everything can be done at any given point of time. I will also share with you what are the critical skills that the world is looking for. So whatever you do, you also need to develop those skills. Okay? Second thing is, then look at a school or a college which will match your values, your interests and your talent. And the third thing is, plan activities and work around that. Okay? Today, as I said, as Father was saying, in our time, we never had anybody to guide us. And as I said, my whole career was a series of accidents. I never chose anything. It just happened. And then you wonder, why did it happen? Now you realize why it happened. So when Father read out probably three uh, you know, post graduates, it was not by choice. It was not by accident. Yeah? But then God had a plan. You know, even those accidents become God-directed, God-given. And as a result, today, you know, I run one of the top business schools in the world as a CEO, not because I'm great, because he had a bigger plan for me, much better. Right. So, facts and figures. Uh, it's a little small, so I'm going to read it from here. Uh, these are very important for you. See, in the US, they did a research. The first one is a research in the US. 1,500 students were categorized into two categories. And I asked them, you're choosing a career for money or you're choosing a career for a purpose. Okay, so 1,500 students, that was a research study. And then they asked them, what are you going to do with that degree? Is it to make money? So 20 years later, when the researcher found out that 101 of those 1,450 were millionaires, and all but one of these millionaires came from the people, you know, there were 255 people who said, they chose something which they deeply care about. Did you get what I said? 1,500 people asking them why they choose your career. 1,250 said they're choosing it because of the money. 250 people said they're choosing it because we love it, we care for it, and we believe there's a purpose behind it. Out of the 250, 100 people became millionaires. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? Yes or no? Yes. Second one is long term research has shown that when people focus on their natural abilities and follow a strategic plan based on a strong 
personal career vision, they experience the profound and lasting benefits of reduced stress, decreased burnout, and the highest levels of satisfaction and balance. Okay, so very, very critical. Again, choose what you love to, what you enjoy doing. Very important. Uh, study of Harvard students, 10 years after they graduated, found out that who had specific goals for the future made salaries three times higher than that of their classmates who did not have specific goals. So having a goal, got the right goal, is a critical factor. Have a goal. Okay? That goal may change over time, but have a goal, have a purpose, have an affection so that you are directed towards a particular destiny. Right. Now, how do I assess what I should be doing? You know, how do I know what I should be doing? There are plenty of free websites, free resources available as to how I can find out what interests me. What do I most enjoy doing? Do I, some people love mathematics. Some people love being creative. Some people love creating music. So what is it that I love doing? Okay? And then, what am I naturally good at? Some of us have that fair. Three years ago, I read a case of a four-year-old poet. Somebody writes poetry when he's four years old. And that's unbelievable. But that's his talent, natural talent. And what do other people say are my greatest strengths? You know, you're good at this, you're good at numbers, you're good at talking, you're good at communication, you're good at analytics, so on and so forth. So what is it that others are saying that I am good at? Next question, what is most important to you in a job? Money is a, you know, it's a problem, it just happens, okay? Money is just, I would say, an offshoot of the career. But what really matters is what excites me. Do I love working with people? Do I love working with technology? Do I love working with software? Do I love working with machines? Do I love, you know, playing with numbers? What is it that I love doing, enjoy doing? And then, which job would you like the most and why? And there are, as I said, a number of websites which I'll share with you where you can actually assess your interests. Look at free. All these are free. Today, you have these resources made available free of cost anytime it go online do that. Yeah? So that is critical. So, personal goals. What do we want to be in life? If you ask me as a Christian child, you know, you need to leave a legacy. You need to leave a mark. When you leave this earth, which will happen one day for all of us, someone should say, that was a life that was well lived. Like Paul said, proclaim, right? I fought the good fight. I ran the race and I am now looking forward to the crown of victory, crown of glory. So that's the kind of uh, you know, uh, ambition, vision that we need to have. And then aptitude. So these aptitudes can be tested. There are a number of aptitude tests which you can do free of cost, which will tell you whether... So let's say for example there is a conversation going on at home, you are a 10th grader, now Papa, Mama and you are deciding. Papa and Mama have dreamt of you becoming an engineer for whatever good, right and wrong reasons. And then you are saying, that is not my focus. So you probably, for the little kids here, you know, you probably need to do a little bit of homework to find out whether that is really up your alley. Okay? So there are two thoughts here. One is, even if you don't like maths and if you have to do math, your brain can be rewired to learn math. Okay? Again, this myth of this left brain, right brain thinking is all completely bummed up. We have a God-given whole brain that can do everything that it wants. Like I used to believe that I can't do mathematics. But if I train my brain hard enough, I can be one of the best mathematicians in the world. Okay, that's the truth. That's neuroplasticity. It's again brain science. So either left brain, right brain, we all have a whole brain which can do remarkable things. Okay? So plan that what is your attitude, what will help you, and then what kind of a personality do you have? Okay? A personality. Again, I will give you a very important character assessment which will help us to find out our own, you know, character strengths, our virtues. Many times, many assessments will look at what is wrong with us, psychological assessments. But what you need to know is what is right for us, what are the good things that we have. And there are time-tested, research-based, scientific assessments which can tell us what our character strengths are. And then really, this is a DIA assessment. I will leave the link also with you. You just need to open an account free of cost and then log in 
and then each one of you can do your own character assessment or character strengths, which will tell you whether you are a peace loving person, whether you are a gratitude focused person, whether you are a compassionate person, mercy, you know, all the wonderful things that we read in the Word of God. Uh, this is not, by the way, a Christian uh, you know, assessment, it is a scientific assessment. Not that uh, Christianity and science cannot go together, they are coming very close, by the way. Uh, that's a topic for another day. And then, the priorities, okay? What are the most important things in our life? So knowing our interests, knowing our values, knowing our personality, having a long-term goal, and looking at our priorities would be a framework for doing what we need to do. How many of you have done a SWOT analysis? Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. In our group, we have probably one or two of us who have done it. This is a very simple but an extremely powerful tool for us to assess what we are good at. Okay? What are our strengths? So some of the questions that come across, if you look at our strengths, what professional qualities do I have? What do I do well? You will know that while you are in 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know what you are doing well, right? You know certain things that you are doing remarkably well. And then, what is the level of my education? How long do I want to go? How much? What is my biggest achievement? What are the personal qualities that I possess? Similarly, weaknesses. We all have weaknesses, right? The human at the end of the day. So what am I bad at? What can I improve? What are my personal flaws, weaknesses? What tasks do I usually avoid doing? You know, a lot of times we avoid doing certain things. What are the roots of my failures? So if we do this critical analysis, it helps us to become better. Now here's a very important thing. Strengths and weaknesses are internal. So it tells about us, about my strengths, about your strengths, about your weaknesses, about my weaknesses. Opportunities and threats are external. We don't control them. They are external, but it can come as an opportunity or it comes as a threat. So what are those opportunities? What trends do I see in my professional area? Uh, one doctor parent was just talking to me while we were sitting there. He was asking about visual communication. Should my child be doing visual communication? And I said it's a good idea. You know, it's a good idea because visual communication has a lot of implications in media, broadcast, journalism, so on. I said the only thing be careful that whatever course your child is planning to do in visual communication should have a component of digital elements because the world is moving towards digital. Digital can be an opportunity if you are prepared for it. Digital can be a threat if you are not prepared for it. Okay, so that is the, if even doctors, today they are saying doctors need to know a little bit of coding. Doctors need a lot of electronics because the, the, the nanotechnology, nanosurgeries, microsurgeries, robotic surgeries are all machine made, you know, electronics. So, this is the important factor that you need to keep in mind. What are the trends that are happening? Lawyers, for example. I mean, law is a good field to be in, but please remember there's a lot of artificial intelligence and robotics that is coming in the field of law. So, Industry after industry, career after career, is being threatened by technology. But if you are prepared for it, that threat can be converted into an opportunity. Okay? Right. And then, can I obtain better education based on those trends? How can I get this notice, which is certifications, badges, so on and so forth? Can I work something different? Again, it's very much possible. At any point of time, you can reinvent your life at any point of time. A few years back, I took as my passion in my PhD research, which was positive psychology, then got into brain science, neuroscience, and today I talk a lot of neuroscience rather than on my original uh, social work and human resources and management. So you can reinvent yourself any time over because the resources are all there. Today you understand this knowledge, you don't even need to go to college to acquire knowledge. You need to go to college to acquire skills. Not knowledge because knowledge is already available free of cost. And last thing is threats. What things can happen wrong when in my career plans? What may get in my way to reach my goals and aspirations? Are there changes in policies, employment policies? 
For example, they say, you know, two-year visa, three-year visa. So what kind of changes will have impact or influence on my thinking? Is technology changing my profession? So if you're planning a career in accounting, probably 10 years down the line, this is not to scare you, but to make you aware that we may not need accountants. We would have software that will do all the accounting that is required. So we need to be careful about all these things. And the result of the SWOT is, take advantage of your strengths and opportunities and try to minimize the weaknesses and threats. The way you minimize your weakness is by getting yourself improved, getting yourself trained, getting yourself acute, and that's the way we do it. So, standard framework, after secondary, what do I do? 10 plus 2, 10 plus 2 computers, 10 plus 2 for particular jobs, you prepare yourself, 10 plus 2, you can look at engineering, medical, law, whatever. Diploma, which I shared with you, which is also possible. So, number of different streams. Okay? Uh, here I will not spend too much time on which stream you should take, which you should not. I will reserve that for the QA and that will help uh, everybody else. But just a list of various options available to us. Okay? Today we have many more. We have humanities, we have liberal arts, we have uh, design, uh, so many other options. Fashion. Uh, and there's nothing to prevent, as long as it's ethical, as long as it excites you, as long as there are career options available, you can feel free to look at any of these options. Okay? So, as I said, I will share all of this uh, presentation, entire presentation with the organizers. So, feel free to go through them and uh, take whatever is relevant. As I said, I will also share some website resources that will help you to assess your career plans, assess your career uh, thoughts. Right. Uh, so, why should you look at uh, you know, science or commerce or arts? Again, different options available. This is just an indicative list. There are many more that you can look at. And as I said, I will address these when we do the QA. Okay, diplomas, again, you have a number of diploma options. Okay. And I will also share with you uh, these are paid courses. Uh, both the degree options and the diploma courses are paid options. But let's say, for example, you know. Uh, you decide I want to do something, you, you, you're not doing accounting, but you feel that I should know what is in accounting. You can do free courses, full course, a full course in accounting, absolutely free of cost. And here's the best one. It comes from some of the most recognized and respected universities in the world. I will give you those links so you can have a look at that. Okay. This is a very, very important slide. Okay? You do whatever you want. You want to do law, you want to do engineering, architecture, finance, accounting, I don't care. But whatever you do, this is the list of competencies and skills as identified by the World Economic Forum. And I would like you to subscribe to the World Economic Forum, it's free of cost, WEF. And you will have an ongoing, because some of you are younger, these are skills for 2020. Uh, interestingly, there was a revised one which was in 2018. They changed it because these keep changing. So you need to be prepared. Whether you are a lawyer, that's fine. But am I preparing myself for complex problem solving? Am I good at critical thinking? Am I good at creativity? Am I good at people management? And if you are not good, it doesn't matter. You can again go for these free available resources which can help you to equip in these areas. So this is a critical list for me. Very important. Whatever discipline you choose, whether doctor, lawyer, architect, engineer, it doesn't matter. Computer science, these are critical life skills for the full industrial revolution. The first one was mechanical, the second one was computer based, the third one was information based, the fourth one is data and digital based. So if you need to survive and thrive in the digital fourth industrial revolution, you need to have these skills. Uh, judgment, decision making, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, the way we relate to it, our fellow beings. Okay, very critical. So, you may be the hotshot mathematical genius, but if you don't know how to interact with your friend, I mean, you're going to have problems. That's what it means. Similar, judgment and decision making. You know, whatever job you do, you would need to take decisions. And decision making is not an easy thing, it's very confusing. So, you need to have the right guidance, the right proof. Service, whatever you do, has to be done with a orientation towards service. You need to have the ability to negotiate. And the last one is nothing but the flexibility in our thinking. Cognitive flexibility is 
flexibility in our thinking process. So we would have a set of thinking, this is how it is. Today I throw a couple of bits that our brain is used two person, one person, right? We broke that. So you need to have the openness and say, yeah, I now realize I learned that I have a mass of brain that can work under person. That is cognitive flexibility. The ability to be open to new ideas. Now listen carefully. The don't is more important than the do. Don't select options because they are easy. What is easy? I, I don't like mathematics, so I would choose literature. That's what I did by the way. Which is wrong. You don't need to do. You shouldn't do that. Okay? Choose things and don't look at marks and grades. Marks and grades, trust me, will give you entry. Okay, a lot of times we are obsessed with this grades and marks. I'm not saying marks and grades are bad or good, but you shouldn't be obsessed with this. That is one part of it. What else can I learn? While I am studying, while I am studying for my you know, grades 80-90 percent, what else can I do? Can I do volunteering? Can I do some sustainability work? Can I do some, uh, you know, a charitable work? Can I write something? You know, can I form a movement? There are hundreds of things you can do. Be inspired. Young kids today can do, you know, can change the world. I don't know how many of you know this and I want you to know this. That we as others have messed up the planet. Okay? We are messing it up big time. You know this. Uh, global warming, environmental challenges and all that. There is a movement with school children across the world. Some of you may be familiar with it. Hundreds of thousands of school children are protesting across the world on adults messing up the planet. So today there is a lot of power that is with the youngsters. Become part of those movements. Become part of those challenging movements which can help make the planet a better place. Okay? So do subjects that don't get bored. That's important. You need to choose subjects that are not easy. You need to choose subjects that you don't get bored. And be aware of subjects of interest and your ability to study those subjects. So which is a little bit of homework you need to do. So practically looking at it, 8, 9, probably 10, you need to look at what are those interests that you have. I would encourage parents to guide our children on that endeavor. Rather than have a fixed mindset, it has to be engineering, it has to be law, it has to be medicine. Not necessarily. It can be anything. It can be anything. It will just be open. Okay? Uh, I will share with you the testimony of my second son. I told you about the first one. Second one, my wife wanted him to become a computer science guy. He wanted to be an audio engineer. Okay? So, of course, this time, no, no, he didn't do it behind the scene. He did it openly. Today, what has happened? You know, we didn't realize this. When we invested, he won a scholarship to one of the top uh, sound engineering uh, colleges in Australia. He did well. He did his master's in media studies. Today, God had a plan even earlier. We didn't realize it. We wanted him to become a computer engineer. Today, we have invested in a business in India where this fellow is carrying a state-of-the-art recording data for audio, video, etc., etc. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? We never had this plan. But the plan was already predetermined by God Almighty, and so that is how it will happen. Uh, how do I get the career of my dreams? How do I plan that? How do I choose that? Right? I would say it is understanding and knowing the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So if you have God fearing abilities, which I believe all of us have, which is why it post uh, your service, you're sitting here listening because you fear. And that I think is a huge tragedy. Don't get carried away by atheistic so-called scientific doctrines which will come and tell you all that. Increasing, and I come from academia so I can very proudly and boldly tell you that from the annals of the highest levels of academia, more and more scientists and professors are coming closer to God, they are discovering God. Okay? So if you, by God's grace, have already gotten to it, stay there. Okay, that's the most important thing. Again, as I said, another day maybe we can discuss. So the first thing you need to ask yourself is what interests me? And for parents, what interests a child? Okay? So this is the fields of studies that interest you and come up with a list of courses you would want to do. Okay? Consider studying and the topics that you would like to be most interested in school as well as the jobs that you want. You know, you, you look at that person and I wish I could do that. I wish I became that person. Okay? So, your interests, 
your options and your vision towards what you want to do. Then, as I said, there are plenty of resources available, absolutely free of cost. Instead of wasting time on WhatsApp and you know, Instagram, you know, I have an 18 year old at home. Uh, I will share with you her story also. And uh, that's what they do. But rather than that, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not anti Instagram. Spend some time on it. But don't get obsessed with social media. Spend more time on knowing what your interests are. Do the research. Do that homework because it's all available for you. And as I said, I need those resources. Speak to people. Talk to people who are in that particular field. You want to get into medicine? Talk to a doctor. Find out. Talk to a few doctors. Talk to a few medical students. What are the pluses? What are the minuses? Why did they choose what they chose? It shouldn't be because some grandfather dreamt that his son will become a doctor. Okay? You choose it because you like it. So do your research. It's based on internet, television, newspapers, and people, whatever. And then this is important. Okay? This is very critical. So you have chosen. I'm going to take doctor's example, visual communication. Nothing wrong, it's a great idea. But when you're doing visual communication, you have a dozen options in visual communication. Please get this clear, okay? So there's College A which is offering visual communication, College B offering, College C is offering. All of them say visual communication. Please do your homework in terms of what the course content is. Very critical. Because on topic it will say visual communication, maybe there are only 11 subjects there. Maybe there is another one which has 33 subjects. And then you go deeper into it, are these subjects better? Okay? So that's a very critical criteria for you to look at what we call course assessment. There are ranking agencies that will rank different programs. So a particular college may be well known in some area, there is a number one college. But is it number one in visual communication? I am just using visual communication in context. Can be anything. Okay? So those are the important things that you need to look at. What are the curriculum? What is the syllabus? What are the courses that get into that particular program? That is important. Then you do an assessment and say, these are relevant, these are important, these are valuable. It will give you a good idea about what is ahead of you. The other important criteria is the quality of the university. Very, very, very critical. Because many times what happens, unfortunately, you have scamsters in the education field also. Okay, I don't want to name names. There are a number of them. If you are looking at Indian programs, uh, UGC has a list of D1 universities. That means these are D-licensed universities. It might be a good idea to do a homework on the UGC website to find out whether the university that you are considering is not in that list. Okay? It should be proper, accredited universities. Don't get swayed by European, American, whatever. Do your homework. They all need to be legally accredited within their jurisdictions. That's a very important criteria for choosing a university. Again, as I said, different universities will have different specialities on which they are good at. Is the specialty that you are looking at relevant and important and significant in that particular university is another matter of serious consideration. Okay. Then, course duration. Uh, again, you need to make a clarity here. Uh, many bachelor's programs have an honors version, which will be an additional one. So, should you do an honors program, should you do a normal program, that's totally up to you. If you have good grades, uh, you can get waivers for a whole year. Like uh, my daughter, Brother Thomas's daughter, they all got a one year waiver from a local UK university here because of the grades that they got in their high school. Okay, you get good grades, 90% plus, they will give you a one year waiver. So you can do an honors program, which is normally four years, which you do for three years. Alright, so those are some important criteria you need to look at. Don't make the mistake of getting into two year degree programs. There are some in some parts of the world that land you in trouble. Preferably four years. If you don't have four years, then in masters you come, you may need to do a bridge course, which is still fine. But two years, strict no no. Yeah? All right. Entry criteria. So many universities would have their uh, criteria. If you're getting into medicine, you have NEET. If you're getting into engineering, you have your common entrance exam, CET, uh, so on and so forth. J, you know, uh, IIT, JE, so on and so forth. 
So what is the criteria for getting into? And if you know the criteria, if you plan that particular university or college, start working on it years ahead because it doesn't happen overnight. So if you're planning IIT, you know there are coaching centers. You can start work. You see, again, this coaching center business is a good thing. I mean, I'm nothing against it. But there are a lot of free resources available. All it needs is your discipline and your time. Just Google that. You'll find plenty of free resources. Download them. Find time to do it. You know? So I'm not against the coaching centers, but if you have the discipline to do it on your own, you don't need to depend on, you know, a coaching center. Secondly, what you can do, two-year coaching. You don't need to go to a coaching center. Maybe you do all the homework yourself. You can save some money for your parents or not. You know what I mean? And then do the basics yourself. And then maybe for some brushing up past six months, three months, you can go to a coaching center. So keep those in mind when you're looking at entry criteria. Many foreign universities will require English language, uh, uh, you know, tests, TOEFL, uh, ESL, so on, and PSL, uh, language tests, so on and so forth. You have to prepare for it to get ready. So if you're looking at Australia, Canada, UK, uh, test of English is important. The good news is that most Indian students have no problem because most of us study in the English medium, so we may not have an issue there. Cost of study. Now here is good news and bad news. If you don't do your homework right, Okay, the first thing is try to, this is for the students, for the kids, okay? You get good grades, save some money for your parents. So my daughter struck a deal with me. She said, okay, I'm going to save you so much of money. What are you going to do with that money for me? Okay, that was smart plan, which is good. God bless her. So save some money for parents. You know, if you get good grades, it's good for you. It's good for your parents, it's good for the family. Okay, there are many universities that will consider academic merit, academic grades, which will reduce the cost of the program. But before you do anything, as I said, there are a number of resources available, do your homework. There are a lot of hidden things which people won't tell you. When you go to an agent or when you go to a college, they may not tell you. And you might be struck with surprises, which is not a good thing to have. Okay? So, I would encourage you to do your homework before you actually plan that. Right? Uh, there are places, again, in Europe, uh, where you can get free education, master's level. Again, there are websites which can help you with that. So you don't need to pay money to do your education. But it's just a question of you doing your home. There are a number of scholarship sites, both in India and abroad, that can help us with scholarships. Okay? Uh, there are scholarships which you gain from the university because of your grades. So there are a number of ways in which the cost of education can be brought down. Yeah, so keep that at the back of your mind. And then, most important would be, what kind of career options do I have when I finish this? Again, as I said, the websites will give you all various facts that are available. What? One word of advice here, uh, the world is moving from, it used to be specialization, then it used to be super specialization, but there is a big danger in there getting too super specialized in a particular discipline. And that discipline can become redundant and then you become redundant. So while looking at specializations, also look at number of general you know, skills and aptitudes, uh, which is what the 21st century is looking for. We call them fluid professionals. The most successful people in any field are people who be very fluid in their approaches. Okay, so these are, uh, if you're making notes, you can make a note. These are the top online learning websites. edX, by the way, is a joint initiative between MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and the Harvard University. You can't get better than that, okay? It's a, it's a joint venture between MIT and uh, Harvard University. You can register free of cost. All the basic courses are absolutely free of cost. If you're serious about it, if you want a certificate for it, then you pay anywhere between $400 to $1,000. And if you have attended all the classes, it's proper class. The first time that I attended one of these MOOCs, as we call it, MOOCs is Massive Online Open Courseware. I thought it was just you know, some casual thing. It wasn't. It's very serious stuff. Real professors will come and teach real time and then it will be recorded on video live. We will have real students from different parts of the world. There will be real assignments given. We will have real groups across the world you will have to do work with. And then do all that and finally if you pay for it 
And in the exam, you also get a certification. Okay? So that is edX. The second one is Coursera, equally good. The only difference is that Coursera has more universities under its umbrella. Again, you just register. There are thousands and thousands of free courses available. Anybody can learn. I mean, I, I'm doing courses all the time. Coursera, edX, and my age. Okay, and I feel I, I don't need certification, but for the knowledge of men. So in other words, by God's grace, we live in an age when all of these resources are absolutely available free of cost. Free of cost. You don't need to pay any money, you just need to find the time to do it. Now here's an example. Some of us, I mean, 11th grade, 12th students, grade 10 students have completed your, your annual year and you probably now will start working in September. The question is what do you do during these three months? Some of us will say, we're going to chill out, which is what my daughter said when I asked her, what are your plans? She said, I was going to chill out. I said, no, you're not, you're chilling out. But in addition to chilling out, do some stuff. You know, so as I said, she's entering into university for uh, psychology, so she is now preparing some basic courses in psychology. Three of course. You get it? I said, do it at your own pace, do it at your own time, but don't waste the time. I'm not saying 24 7 hours, but make yourself offer uh, these are other advanced, uh, I mean, other uh, universities, Udacity. Udacity has this concept of uh, micro degrees or nano degrees as they call them. So you can pick up a particular course, four months, six months, you choose what you want to do, age, no restriction, you can do that and then you get a nano degree on a particular area, Udacity. Okay? Academic Earth is again a whole uh, slew of courses which are available. You can choose, do your homework, find out which one excites you, which one is more easy or which one is more uh, exciting for you and then choose what you want to do. And of course Apple has its own iTunes University which has also courses. Uh, this is for people planning your careers abroad. Okay? So a number of resources available, all these are tested uh, resources. Another very important thing I need to tell, most career agents, counseling agents, should not charge you any money. Did you hear what I said? Okay, say for example, you're planning to go to Australia. Sorry. Now, there is an institution called IDP, which is in Tadera Beach Road. Okay. IDP. So, you go to IDP. IDP will do everything for you, right? From assessing your eligibility, to guiding you through the application process, to filling out, to getting you done. The only money you will pay is to take the IELTS test, IELTS test, which is mandatory. So you do that, I think it costs about 750, 800 dirhams. You do that and the IDPs are sent. Other than that, you don't need to pay a single bill to IDP. You get what I'm saying? So be careful. All these are free services. What IDP does is not bring a service. They get the money from the university. So you don't need to pay for it. You just go through these processes and ask them straight away are there professional fees. Normally they should not charge you because the university will pay. Okay, keep that in the back of your mind. So all these. Uh, many inquiries were there for medical, medicine. So the third one, Padre International is run by a wonderful gentleman who has been here for 35 years. Uh, he runs it locally here. So if you are looking at medicine across the world, Asia, China, Russia, East Europe, US or India, uh, that's the right person for it. So they do other programs also, but they are very well known for medicine. There were many inquiries for medicine. So Kathy International could be a very good thing. All free, they don't charge you guys. Uh, you just have to go there, meet with them, talk to them and uh, get to whatever advice you need. And uh, many more are there. I'm just giving you all these details so that you can check them out. Yeah? And each one will give you comparison. So you can compare courses, you can compare colleges, you can compare universities, you can compare careers. Okay. So all kinds of stuff you can do. All three of course. You know, all you need is only time guys. So just ask the Lord to give you time to use your time meaningfully. Again, many more. Bachelor's students only for undergrad programs. We have almost all the programs across the world covered. Okay, study about top of universities, world scholarship. Uh, this is another very interesting website. Uh, I think I put that across. Yes. Uh, transitions abroad. Where they give you. So you already decide I'm going to Australia. So what should I do in Australia? What I should not do in Australia? How can I minimize cost? How can I do part time work? You know? It gives you lots of useful information on different countries. Okay, and this is about scholarships. World Scholarship Forum is a website dedicated.
created for scholarships across the world. So you are doing whatever discipline, you can check out that they are eligible for scholarships. Alright, so I am going to end with a small video. It's a 5-6 minute video. A very inspiring video. We will do that and then we will move on to the Q&A. Right? I'm sure you must have heard of this guy. I want you to know that the fear of being alone and having no purpose in your life is one of the most disabling things that you will ever experience in your life. And you need to know the answer of two questions. Who are you and what do you want? For me, I realized as a kid, yeah, there was a choice I had to make. I would believe what the world said and only believe that broken pieces are ahead for me or believe that God loves me. It was hard. Because when God says in the Bible, I have a plan for you, I'll be good. Really? And I pray for hours of that. What do you want? I wanted arms and legs. It's not that difficult to believe. The God of the Bible says He has a plan for you. Do you see this timeline? I'm eight years old going forward into the future. No idea what was ahead. The Bible says He has a plan. We don't see the plan, so it's kind of foolish to believe something that you can't see. But faith helps you to do that. Faith is exactly that. And faith comes when you hear the Word of God. When I heard the Word of God, I still didn't understand His love, His plan. So I prayed for a blueprint of His plan. And He didn't come back to me on that request. And when you don't hear from God, you then start to conclude what you believe. From then on, do you decide to keep on believing and waiting to see what happens and trust Him? Or do we conclude to do this? There is no God. I'm alone. There is no hope. There is no purpose. I'm getting bullied for the rest of my life. I'm never getting married. Never going to have kids. Never going to be happy. Man was I wrong or what? And at age 10, I tried to end my life, but I'm still here. All I could see were broken pieces, and I had no idea that there would ever be hope for someone truly disabled, emotionally, mentally, uh, uh, spiritually, physically, the whole thing. I mean, on every checkbox. I wasn't myself sometimes, I was so angry, angry at my life. And I want you to know in your life there will be times where you feel like you'll be on the edge. But when you look at the word disabled, D-I-S-A-B-L-E-D, -E when you turn your back on the lies like this, and you come to the truth, the truth will set you free. Do I look disabled to you today? No. When you put a G O go, walk by faith and not by sight, and you put a G O in front of the word disabled, it spells God is able to do what? Ephesians 3:20. Exceedingly abundantly more than you could ever ask, imagine. Or retain. What does that mean? It actually means that God has a good plan. He never withholds any good gifts. I was 15 years old and I read John chapter 9. A man was born blind and no one knew why. Jesus was asked by everyone. Why was this man born blind? Now, my doctors don't know why I was born this way. My parents don't know why I was born this way. And 
now I want you to know that we don't have any answer for my birth defect. Jesus said this blind man was born this way because God's works are going to be revealed through him. Jesus spits on the dirt, puts mud on the face of the blind man, and there is no record of the blind man saying anything, flinching, asking anything, moving backward, nothing. Jesus performs his miracle as he is still. I realize Jesus did not sit the blind man down and say, uh, Mr. Blind Man, my name is JC, I'm the healer, I'm about to spit in the dirt and give you a facial, and after we wipe the mud off your face, you're going to see. He didn't do that. God doesn't need to tell me his plan. I just need to be still and believe he has a plan. That's when you walk by faith. Why would you need faith if God told you everything? If I was age eight and I prayed for arms and legs and God had said told me everything he's going to do until the age of 33, you know what I mean?
So if a normal exam is three hours, these children will be given additionally three and a half or three hours and 45 minutes, whatever, depending on the intensity of the exam. So the good news as far as the way is concerned, is already a well-crafted policy these children can get into mainstream. In fact, I even presume that you know the nomenclature used here is not disadvantaged, challenged or whatever. These are people of what is the word? Determination, that's the word we use here. So, as far as the way is concerned, you're very safe. You don't have to worry. Uh, in India, the inclusive policies are coming out now, so it will still take a little more time. But if you're specific about the course of action that you want, I can certainly tell you. Yeah. Great question. Any other? No more questions? Yes. Can you pass the mic? Just pass it. Good afternoon, sir. I'm Mulita. Actually, I first did my graduation in commerce and then management in finance. So I'm working here for three years and uh, I want to do my PG. Uh, that's the next step in finance. So, uh, what's your opinion on distance education? Because I'm employed now and I don't want to leave my job. So, what's your comments on distance education? Lady says uh, she's working, she's got a graduation, she wants to do a post graduation. Uh, should she do distance learning? Now, uh, before you consider distance learning, if you have some element of financial resources available, there are a number of part time options available in the city, in Dubai. Uh, many universities have part time MBAs, which are in the weekends, so it's a Friday, Saturday. And uh, or in the evenings, so it doesn't eat into your work time. So you can work, you can continue working, and you can look for the part-time options. Uh, when you say distance learning, I'm not against distance learning, but what you need to be careful is what university is this? What are the courses? If we go ahead and put a framework. So what is the university? How is it ranked? How is it respected? What are the courses within that curriculum? Check all that out. And then how the classes will be done. Because today again technology makes available all this online, digital, so you can actually do that. Uh, there are many options available. So today you don't need to leave your work. You can work and also do either part-time or distance. Yeah, that's that. Any other guess, ma'am? Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the parish committee members to organizing such a great and wonderful session. So your session was really informative. A lot of questions we had in mind for the other. One of my biggest questions as an Indian parent and very conservative part is that uh, you've already given a list of questionnaires which a child has to complete or parent has to be supporting the child to complete to ensure he gets into a correct choice of his interest and things like that. Uh, the dilemma in my mind is that he is a child who is at the age of 15 or 17. He is doing that exercise rightly because obviously, uh, first of all, the conservative thought, as I said, is that the child has got an immature uh, age to decide his career. And probably at that stage, he would decide something. And our later on, down the session or down the uh, course, he might shift off. So you give a different scenario on that as well. So, can you? Share your thoughts. Is that the right age for a child to choose his career path? And as a parent, how do I do that and uh, help you out? Great question. Uh, again, the way to do it is, I think I have to observe 15 is it mature or mature? A question of delay because it depends on the level of learning that child has got. But the easiest solution is his teachers would be the best observers on what aptitude he has. The school will have a career counsellor and it would be a good idea to meet with that career counsellor, spend some time with him or her on what his aptitude is. They will also have some specific instruments which will tell their career aptitude, so on and so forth. And I think very important, please don't be offended when I say this, I think we as parents should spend more time with them in their plan. You know, in our busy schedules, very often what happens is that I have a number of my daughter's classmates and friends who go into depression 
who go into suicidal tendencies because at home they don't get that emotional support that they need. And I'm not blaming anybody here. Uh, I wish and pray that all of us find the time for our children. So yes, while we are planning, I think it's a four-way process. Teachers, parents, the career counselors, and most importantly, us as parents. So together we work and then find out the solution rather than just leave the child to make those uh, decisions. Yes, sir? First of all, I would like to thank you for the session. Thank you. Uh, my question is, my daughter is in the Is she planning to do her first studies in India? Is there a transition or any transitional plan that needs to be kept in mind? Yeah. The only challenge in the older system, as you know, is uh, she needs to do the A and then she needs to do the A plus. So it will be 13 years. Okay? So that is one very critical criteria. Second important thing is some of us will be uncomfortable doing the 13. So what you could do, if you have an idea, there are many universities even here which offer what's called a foundation program. So she finishes A. And then straight away gets into the foundation of the university. The child will also feel comfortable, she will feel more mature that she's getting to college. Okay? And do that. Uh, in India, now because the whole level is down, the only challenge is again that 13 year criteria is there. So in India also. So they will expect her to do 13. I mean, we don't take, for example, we also take uh, you know, uh, British curriculum students, but we need the 13 years, which is, uh, I would say, a stumbling block. So one option would be, which is what we did with my daughter, she was in the old level school system, we changed it to CBS. And it, well, it is difficult, it's not easy, so I'm not recommending that. O level, A level is very practical, project oriented, CBSE is a lot of money. So unless your child hopes up, it's a huge challenge, you don't take the risk, spend time talking to her or him before you do that. But that worked for us. Uh, we didn't want the 13 year group, so what we did, we shifted her to CBSE. We put her in India for three years to go through the process of real life experience. Uh, she came back for 11th and 12th, did very well, and as I said, she joined the local university here. Yeah. But the answer is that 13 years is an important factor. Though UK universities don't text UK they will take her in the 12th year, put her to a foundation she can do. But if India, then 30 years. Anybody else? Yes. So I just have a doubt. Yeah. Like as you mentioned earlier, like whatever the career job you take, it has to be connected to artificial intelligence. No, 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 I never said. Please don't no. That's a good question. No, like you need to be ready for it. So like I, my goal is to become an IAS officer. Okay. I just wanted to know like any, is there any like thing, how is that connected to IAS? Excellent question. Uh, she wants to become an IAS officer and she was confused about the relevance of artificial intelligence. Uh, what I meant by AI, it's not AI at all, okay? I will now link it to your exam. Okay, so she wants to become a civil service officer. Great uh, dream. Uh, Start so preparing for it right now. Okay, it's a highly competitive world, but we want more and more of God's children coming into the stream. Uh, there are you know, institutions in India which hold you on you know, civil services, so you can do all that. The important criteria is side by side, and you can do it right now. You don't need to wait for your civil service exams to get over. Get into one of those online websites, NX or Coursera or whatever. Get the flavor of what artificial intelligence is, what digital uh, intelligence is all about, what big data is all about. So tomorrow, let us say you are a collector in a, in a, in a district, okay? And I wish and pray you to pick up one. Now, when you are there, there will be a lot of data that comes across. Conventionally, they will be using the conventional you know, methods of finding data. But if you are a digitally savvy collector, you can use big data to analyze that data. Get what I'm saying? And please remember, you don't need to become computer science specialists. I think I got the message wrong. I'm not asking you to become a computer science specialist. I'm not a computer science guy. But I can speak about AI, I can speak about its applications, I can speak about how it will be relevant, so whether it's robotics, machine learning, deep learning. It's just a question of knowing what it is and trying to know how to use it. So you will find a computer science person who can help you to use that big data for your data analysis. So that's, the, that's what I meant by it, because the world is moving digital. So 
So if you are a lawyer, you don't need to know in lawyer's offices, you will have seen those big, big uh, books, remember? All those case laws that they come. All these case laws today are available uh, in the internet. You don't need to have them, maybe just because of the fun of it, you can keep them. So you don't need to have them. Within seconds, you have artificial intelligence enabled uh, legal systems that can give you case laws within seconds. Similarly, doctors, there's Ideal Watson, which has the entire portfolio of uh, you know, medical cases across the world. So if you're a doctor, Ideal Watson is free for doctors. You can use them, you, know, you can access them free. So these are the resources I'm talking You need to be tech savvy to use these resources, whatever discipline you want to get. Great question. Any other? Okay, if there are no more questions, I think I've standing between lunch. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Father of the Parish uh, Church, for giving you the time to come to Thank you so much, sir. It was indeed a humble privilege to host amongst us a versatile scholar and educationist for your, your capacity who with your academic prowess and management cloud have carved a niche for yourself on the global map. We are extremely grateful to you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us today. On behalf of our cathedral, I request our regard at your father Nayan B. Fiddle and our sister regard at your father Sibyl Thomas to felicitate Professor Christopher Abraham with the token of our love and gratitude. With that, we mark the culmination of this session. We take leave with the hope that it has truly been an insightful and fruitful experience for each one of you. All the best and hope you have a nice day. Thank you.